Someone's getting dick tonight! My roommate exclaimed as we walked up the jagged sidewalk to the house. God, oh my god, that is enough out of you. Outwardly dismissing the idea, but inwardly, maybe she wasn't too far off. That night was the annual Sigma Chi Christmas party. And unlike most years, however, this wasn't the typical shindig featuring Rudolph-themed wallpaper covering the whole punched walls and at least one man in a dick in a box costume. It was a little bigger than that. This night was the night I knew Bryce, the boy I'd been talking to for the last few weeks, would ask me to be official. I knew it in my gut, and even though I was really excited, I was really fucking nervous. <laughs> All my friends seemed to be over the dating thing already, and my roommates were just happy to get someone to get me out of their hair. The only assistance available on the subject was on the internet, specifically on WikiHow. And uh, even though I didn't know a lot, I didn't uh, think this, this was it. <laughs> so I decided to go it alone. After we arrived at the party, the house was already bumping with the sound of trap music and drunk horny freshmen. Through the backyard gate, sloppily adorned with Christmas lights and dollar store tinsel, Bryce popped around the hot cocoa peppermint schnapp station, grinning broadly and decked out in a Santa hat and a Star Wars Christmas sweater. Where are you headed? He asked, locking me in an embrace two seconds too long just to be friendly. Probably going for a beer, why? Don't drink that. Hang here for a second, he said as he darted off into the residence suite. I stared at the vacant spot where he stood with rosy red cheeks and a symphony roaring in my chest. I wasn't a girl that boys liked, or at least I was told that I wasn't. After, being, after a year of being told by my sorority sisters and a lifetime of being told by my parents that everything about me was inherently unattractive, it took me by surprise that this dirty blonde freckled face with a revolving wardrobe of band t-shirts took an interest, especially when no one else did. In the weeks of isolation that was fall semester, it felt good to be with someone who would take me craft beer shopping with his fake ID and sit on my carpet playing my worn down copy of Is This It on my Victrola until my roommate screamed, if I hear last night one more goddamn time, I'm gonna kill myself. I just turned it up. As soon as he was out of sight though, another less friendly voice appeared behind me. What are you doing here? I turned around and saw the sight of my friend and IRL shame wizard Colin staring blankly with his arms crossed. He was in a weird fucking mood. Jesus, nice to see you too. He offered me a can of Frat's Finest piss beer until I told him who I was waiting for. You're, uh, you're still on that? I mean, I live with a guy. Uh, you can do better. Trust me. Before I could ask what the hell that meant, Bryce reemerged with a bottle in one hand and an opener in the other. I got you a coffee stout. I figured you might be interested. He began giddily listing off the brewer, the bitterness rate, and the refinery process like he was on the goddamn tap room payroll. <laughs> I'm intrigued. I lied. I'm fucking allergic to coffee. <laughs> but he was so fucking cute, I decided to roll with it. Should I go get a red cup? Why, are you afraid I have cooties? He asked before taking a sip. I'm fine with cooties, I said with confidence seemingly pulled out of my asshole as I grabbed the bottle from his hand and took an ostentatious glug. Hives, my friends? I hear are temporary. He stared with a half smile for a few seconds until he finally interrupted his self-imposed silence. You're impressive, you know that? Trying to keep my protruding smile contained, I handed the bottle back and took a few moves towards the basement steps. For the first time in my life, I was the object of desire, and I knew exactly what I wanted with this newfound power. I was queen of the motherfucking world, and it was time to get the queen some shots. <laughs> After a few minutes, we got torn into differing party tides. About an hour and a half went by without seeing him. <laughs> Even though I didn't want to be a clinger, I spent every conversation, every round of beer pong, and every dance-off wondering where he was. 
He hadn't tried to find me, but I mean, that's fine, right? We all have our own friends. I mean, he'll come back. I know it. Feeling the tidal wave of liquor I had been anxiously drinking begin to crash down on me. I, stood, I slid down the wall to sit by myself. I saw the stares of friends and acquaintances that stood around me, and although I dismissed it as drinking judgment, they felt a little different. I couldn't pinpoint how, but they all moved in the same motion. They looked at me, they rotated their heads to a fixed point in the crowd, and then looked at each other. A strangled grasp of dread began to take root. My hyperfocus was broken until Colin stood above me, stone-faced. I think it's time that you went home. I'm not that fucked up. I'm fine. <laughs> I shot back, annoyed at the shady bullshit he had been pulling all night. Like, was the thought of someone liking me so inconceivable that like it couldn't be true to him? Like, was, did he think that I was crazy? <laughs> it's not. It's not that, it's just, I'm taking it home. We can talk about it in the morning. He reached out his hand, gesturing for me to rise up. I rolled my eyes, and as I stood to get away from him, I saw Bryce across the room. His pale hands up the skirt of a girl in a latex Mrs. Claus costume, as their mouths latched on to each other for dear life. The whole room was looking at me, half of them with pity and half of them in anticipation. It was like the oxygen was being sucked directly out of my lungs. Colin put his hand on my shoulder. I'm taking you home. I began to gain deep grasp for air, fighting the urge to gag in front of what felt like every human I had ever met in my entire life. I mean, it made sense, right? She's her straight-haired and slender and beautiful and the type of girl I imagined every guy would dream of having. And I'm me, the Hermione-haired virgin in straight jeans, too pathetic to walk in a straight line without tripping over my goddamn shoelaces. I was fucking kidding myself if I thought that I can compete with that. As I turned to the door, though, I was overtaken by another thought. Was that girl the one who stayed up with him until two every night, talking on the phone? <laughs> Did she know that when he was five, he secretly wanted to be a dinosaur when he grew up, or that he likes watching K-dramas to go to sleep? Does that girl know what he dreams about, what his fears are? Does she give a shit? Like I do. I was going to show him that I was good enough for him. I was going... <laughs> to show him that he should love me. And if waiting around for him to figure that out is what it took, I guess it was something that I was willing to do. I stomp over to the bar, throwing back another tequila shot. Colin left. I didn't see him for the rest of the night. Bryce finally met up with me again, cherry red lipstick smudged across his face as he invited me to go sit up on the rooftop with him. Climbing up on the panels, we saw hundreds of people that littered the property, but we were far above the noise. It felt like I could breathe again, at least just for a little bit. Your, uh, your shirt is pretty great. I say with a little less confidence than before, gesturing towards the Christmas-themed Death Star. He laughed as he clumsily spilled his entire drink on the head of an unfortunate below. So uh, are we going to go see Rogue One after finals? I don't know, that, uh, that sounds like a date. I slurred as we both laughed. Part of me had begun to sober up, however. Did you just ask me on a fucking date? Like, like after that? <laughs> we sat atop the roof until about 1.30, last call. He invited me down for the final round. Before getting to the stairs, he turned around and reached his hand out to help me. I gladly obliged his gentlemanly offer, but when we got to the bottom of the steps, he didn't let go. In the nearly empty basement, I was holding hands with him. He wanted to hold my hand. I finally broke off our grasp when the DJ began playing All I Want for Christmas, a song that no human in the world can resist. Right, is it just me? Okay. <laughs> At this point, at least in my mind, the only two people in 
the basement were us, as we flailed around to the tune, letting the green and red lights reflect off the wrapping paper wall and bounce off our faces. I knew this was the end of the song, and I knew that the end of the night was approaching too. I needed to do something, and I finally thought that I had enough signs that the feelings were at least somewhat reciprocated. As Mariah Carey sang her last, you! I point to him, smiling and singing into an imaginary microphone as I continued to dance. Nothing mattered anymore. The red flags, the doubters, the other skanks. I was in bliss. I just wanted to stay there, just for a minute. He stood still and stared at his feet. As the song ended, silence took over, and only when he grasped my shoulder did I begin to fall down to earth. Can I, uh, can I talk to you outside? I followed him through the great gate onto the green belt, about 15 feet from the house. His mouth began to move, but I wasn't listening to the words coming out. The cold mascara tears began to stream down my face as party stragglers stared at me like a zoo animal through the iron fence. <sighs> it felt like he talked for what was an eternity, but the only thing I can think about was my confusion. He eventually walked away, and after a few minutes of emotion and temperature-triggered frozenness, I walked home. After laying in bed for several hours, unable to go to sleep, my phone buzzed several times to find seven green text messages. I contemplated deleting them without opening, sending them straight to the fucking trash where they probably belonged, but my curiosity got the best of me. Hey. I know I'm probably the last person you want to talk to right now, but I just want to say how sorry I am for last night. You're the best friend I have, and I don't want anything to happen to that. I'm terrified of losing you. I'm so sorry. After staring at my screen for another two fucking hours, I shut my brain off and let my thumbs type the message that opened the door to a year of lies, deception, and emotional battery. So, like... If I forgive you, does this mean we can still see Rogue One? Give it up for Kirsten Hernandez.